you. Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to worship. Our annual governance meeting is going to take place this morning right after the worship service. I know you're at home watching this, but if you're close by, you can be here at time at 1030 to be a part of that meeting. So I welcome all confirmed members to try and get over here to church in time for that meeting at 1030 this morning. Remind you, we are back to worship inside the sanctuary each and every Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Hope to see some of you here in person. Reminder, this month we're conducting a food drive on behalf of the Cool Food Pantry leading up to the food stock program, which is three weeks from today on June 27th. The items that they're requesting are listed in connections. You can drop them off here at church, bring them inside if the door's open. If not, there's a bin right by the back door. You can leave the items there. Thanks for your support. Now let's worship God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily glorify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of those who hope in you, 
be present and hear our prayers. And because in the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, so that in keeping your commandments, we may please you in will and deed. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First readings from the third chapter of Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the same time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricks me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, Lord were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. 
For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain Jesus, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What does it mean to be human? Where do people come from? Why are human beings the way we are, varying across a spectrum that ranges from warm and kind to cold and uncaring? What is our purpose in life? We know that the Bible tells the story of God. Through the pages of Scripture, we learn who God is, what God is like, what God has done and continues to do, what God expects, and what God promises. The Bible also tells our story, the story of humanity. Through a wealth of engaging stories, the Bible addresses the questions I posed at the outset, who we are and what we're for. The Bible is thus not only a book of theology, teaching us the ways of God, it is also a book of anthropology, showing us how to be truly and fully human. When we're born into this world, we don't know the first thing about God. Likewise, upon arrival, we have a lot to learn about how to live as authentic persons. The Bible does not provide instruction, though, like a textbook. Instead, the scriptures engage our hearts and minds by means of many marvelous stories. You and I are invited to discover our own story in the narratives of both the Old and New Testaments. And of course, the story begins as it should at the beginning. Genesis is the first book of the Bible, and Genesis means origin, coming into being. The opening chapters present the story of our origin, how we came to be. We hear the story of God's creation and our place in creation. Chapters 1 and 2 describe the beauty and order and goodness of the creation. God creates all the wonders of the universe, the heavens and the earth, sun and moon, land and sea, plants and animals, and then as a grand finale, God creates human beings in his own image. Where do we come from? We come from God. Not by chance or by accident, but by God's design. We are blessed with, with marvelous capacities. Psalm 8 exalts that God has made us but little lower than the angels. The early church father Irenaeus observed, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. Humans are indeed the crown of creation. Like God and unlike all the other creatures, humans enjoy a great deal of freedom Yes, we have certain instincts like all animals, but we are not hardwired or limited by instinct. We are able to choose and to change. We can override our instincts. And this freedom is a wonderful and liberating capacity. It makes humans highly adaptable and empowers us to create wonders of
of our own. Then chapter 3 in Genesis, which is our reading today, presents another aspect of humanity. Created in God's image, we are like God in many ways. However, unlike God, humans are not infallible. The primal story of Adam and Eve relates how and why we messed up and how we continue to mess up. Our power to choose opens us to the possibility of making choices that are neither wise or good. People are created to live in harmony with God and with one another and with the creation. The intricate balance and harmony in the created order is a wonder to behold. The insights of science have served to make us even more aware of the beautiful and complex interrelatedness of all living things and the universe itself. However, sometimes instead of living in harmony with God and with one another, we hit some notes that are off-key and rather discordant. Instead of abiding in love and gratitude, we choose to turn inward, becoming arrogant and selfish. Rather than seeing ourselves as members of a wider community, we center all our attention in on ourselves, our personal wishes, wants, and desires. The ego takes charge and is interested in one thing, What's in this for me? It's been said that the three letters of that word ego stand for easing God out. We are created by God, but we can choose to ignore God, to ease God out of the equation altogether. The story of Adam and Eve illustrates how easily you and I can go astray, how we are susceptible to temptation. Well, consider their circumstances. They were living in the beautiful abundance of paradise. They had each other to share it with. They had peace and freedom and security. They were living in serene harmony with God and with the creation. Yet somehow all of that wasn't enough. When the serpent salesman came knocking at their door, as sooner or later he always does, Adam and Eve might have said to him, you know, we have more than we could possibly want or need. Life is great for us, so save your breath. We are beyond content. But this salesman was clever and crafty as a snake. He insinuated himself into their contented life in a seemingly innocuous way. He asked what sounds like a harmless question, as though merely seeking a bit of information. Did God say, he asked, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? You know, just asking for the record, you know. But Eve is now fully engaged, and she explains that actually there's only one tree whose fruit is forbidden to them, and that eating it would be fatal to them. Having managed to subtly bait his hook, the salesman now sets that hook. Guess what, he says. You won't die if you eat this fruit. And what's more, if you eat it, you will become like God. How do you like those apples? Eve pauses to consider this opportunity. She starts to sell herself on the idea of eating the forbidden fruit. It is a delight to the eye. It looks really good. It's obviously delicious to eat, and it will make me wise. This God is wise. So why not? Even before taking the first bite, Eve has already distanced herself from God. She's exercising her freedom to choose, to choose her way over God's way. And wouldn't it be great to become like God? So taking completely for granted all that she has, all that she is, Eve takes a bite of that forbidden fruit. And by God, it is delicious. It's fantastic. She tells Adam, you've got to try this. He won't believe how good it is. And of course he does. Why wouldn't he? It looks good, and Eve has no apparent side effects from eating the forbidden fruit. And so it is that God has been eased out of the story. Of course, there is more to this story. There's the awakening of conscience, the shame and discovering themselves naked, the guilt of having disobeyed the God who made them and who loves them. And of course, they start playing the blame game. Adam blames Eve, Eve blames the serpent. They try to avoid the responsibility that comes along with their God-given freedom. We know this story because it is our story. It's yours and mine. This is us. This is how we are. There is much that is good and right with us. We still bear the image of God. We're blessed in many ways. Yet we can always be distracted and tempted 
by the prospect of having just a little more. We can forget God while on the way to getting what we think we want and need. Our pursuit of personal happiness can be misguided. It can lead us away from God and from other people. Our best aim is the pursuit of godliness, which is to say, simple goodness. Happiness is really not the goal. Happiness is a byproduct discovered in the pursuit of love and faithfulness. It turns out that the Bible is God's story and our story too. Keep God and other people in your story and the story will ultimately end well. That's a promise from God. Thanks be to God. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us become, come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in the service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved children to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear, that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship 
set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for fellow members, Michael, Lori, Hannah, and Thea Grauer, George, Paula, Mason McGuire, and Sandy Nagel. We thank you for them, and we ask your blessing on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to follow Christ, make disciples, and live the gospel. Thanks be to God. Disciples